to start by saying Lashana Tova, happy Rosh Hashanah. So, yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy yes. New Year. It's a new year. But while we're in the old one, Donald Trump. <laughs> he had a rough weekend. He had a rough weekend. On the lighter side, the Trump campaign got the SNL treatment Saturday night, including a spoof of a lady who was here last, just last week. Campaign manager Kellyanne Conway. Take a look. Name a reason people give for being late. Kelly Ann. Okay, well, Steve, I do not have an answer, even though I did buzz in. Um, so I'll do what I usually do, which is talk and talk until people forget the question, and then I'm going to make an insane claim about Hillary. Um, uh, Hillary Clinton is North Korean. <laughs> okay, then. Show me a bunch of lies. <laughs> <laughs> so did that portrayal ring true to anybody at the table? Yeah. She was here last week. Yes. And the woman does not know a semicolon or a period. She does not. She is like the queen of the run-on sentence. Yeah. So it's very hard to have a conversation. So you have to interrupt her, which is what we had to do. Politicians are trained to do that, you know. They're trained yes. to filibuster because they, yeah. you know, th yeah. that's how they control the conversation. Well, because you think it, news people would know that yeah. by now. Yeah, well, that's why Joy was, that's was jumping trained. in. Joy, <laughs> yeah. She said it during commercial. She turned to her and she goes, I, really, do you know how to use a period? I can't talk to you right now. I did. So I said funny. it to her. But that's, no. that's the training, right? Yeah. Yeah. Lawyers are trained the same way because you want to hammer in the point, want to hammer in the point. But they were so dead on with her. It was unbelievable. Yeah. Also, the whole show was hilarious. I also told her during the break that it's, she has time to get out. Get out now, I told her. <laughs> she says. You know, she, she's a woman. What is she doing with this nut, you know? Get out now. Joy had a bit of an intervention I did. Her. I did a little intervention. <laughs> did she listen? Yeah, she was laughing. <laughs> yeah, she actually had a very good time with us. Yeah, she, she was very nice. I liked yeah. her. So in much more serious Trump news, hours after the New York Times posted an article on his past tax records. <laughs> it makes you giddy. It makes you giddy. No, it's just so outrageous. You can't do anything but laugh. Yep. He then took the stage in Pennsylvania and lost his mind. Just take a look at the clip. I can't even say it. Take a look. She's supposed to fight all of these different things. And she can't make it 15 feet to her car. Give me a break. Give me a break. Give me a break. She's home resting right now. She's getting ready for her next speech, which is going to be about 15 minutes, and it's going to be in two or three days. He's the one who fell asleep in the middle of the debate. <laughs> <laughs> He also wondered if Hillary was crazy, and then he questioned her loyalty to her husband. Oh, yeah. Any other nuggets from this fabulous speech jump out at you? <laughs> that, that was a significant nugget to me, that, that he would question Hillary's loyalty to Bill, sort of alleging that she had an affair. And um, Jake Tapper, uh, Giuliani also sort of picked up that thread and was arguing that. And Jake Tapper, uh, over the weekend, did this great job. He said to, to Giuliani, the accusation was that Hillary Clinton was cheating on Bill. It was an unhinged and wild accusation, and I can understand why you can't defend it, because it's indefensible. But and it is did, coming yeah. from Giuliani, well, the man who's had affairs, pot, coming calling from, the kettle you know, Trump. black. Yeah. 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 It's huge pot. It's <laughs> huge. Yeah. It's huge. Yeah. They're desperate. But well, it's a topic that uh, Trump is familiar with, infidelity. He's, he's, that's the one thing he knows about. Yeah. Well, yeah. you know, the, truth, the help stuff, that's true. The help stuff bothers me, though, because something should be beneath, you know, you're, you're running for president, and you, you shouldn't be doing but stuff like that. Nothing. Yeah, but you know what? This should disgust everybody. I mean, I disagree with Hillary Clinton on policy mm -hmm. issues, but I want her healthy. You know, I'm not mm -hmm. sitting here rooting for something bad or making fun or this kind of stuff. You're running for president of the United States for everybody, and that means if you win, people who support Hillary, you're their president, too. Yeah. Yes, so you I can't insult people that. like yeah. that. Yeah. It yeah. makes me very well, upset. Remember, remember he made fun of the uh, disabled reporter. He made yeah. fun of a disabled reporter, but claimed that he wasn't making fun of that reporter when we Which was all know that well, he the, was. The thing that yeah. was it, I keep saying the thing that was it, and then there's something else. <laughs> right. Uh, <laughs> he also called on his supporters to monitor polling places for voter fraud in certain neighborhoods, saying, you know what I'm talking about.
Yeah. Get your all of your friends, you know, and then drive to, to neighborhoods and watch because we don't want to lose because you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. So to me, that's a I thought voter intimidation was gone, but I keep forgetting we're in 1950 with this clown. Yeah, that's and, and that's that's and some people in the audience are saying, "Oh my God!" Right? Yeah. Because it it reminds us of those roving voter intimidation squads that yes. were utilized by the KKK. Yes. Um, after the Civil War, and and who I also support him, by the way. Who also support oh, yeah. him? Not so, pointing fingers, but well, yeah. those are yeah. the, the when Hillary referred to the deplorables, she's talking about the KKK, the neo-Nazis, right. and the white right. supremacists. She's not talking about the working class guys yeah. who like him. But he she's is talking, talking about, about, he's talking yeah, about talking going about, into poor neighborhoods yes. and intimidating people who don't want to vote for him. I thought that was against the law. I thought it we'd is. nip that in the bud. It's so illegal. I'm hoping, because it's, on, it's, it's there. I'm not making it up, I'm telling you. So I'm hoping that the voter people, voter registration people, will take him to task for this. He can be sued for that. I mean, I the Republic, there's a decree that the Republican Party signed in 1981 that said they would not do this. And it's against the law, even for police. I, I think um, Donald Trump called for police officers to also show up. Police officers in or out of uniform can't show up to, to voter poll places um, unless they are voting themselves. So he's calling for these illegal um, uh, actions. And I think what's interesting, maybe Jed, you can explain this. I mean, this seems to be a broad Republican strategy to try to suppress votes and then claim that the election, the results of the election are illegitimate. It's, yeah. it's a strategy. I don't that think it's a broad, broad Republican again. strategy. I think I think we have to no? separate Donald Trump from yeah. the rest yeah. of the Republican right. Party. But the Republican Party there are people no, there are people in the Republican Party that are disgusted by this stuff. I mean, I'm not a Republican, I'm a libertarian, but mm -hmm. I'm, I'm center right. And he, he says things that disgust me that are divisive. And people were comparing it to, if you I don't know if you remember, but back in 2008, there were a couple of Black Panthers that had stood outside a polling place mm -hmm. and intimidated people. There's a difference, though. <laughs> Obama wasn't calling for that and wasn't saying things. This is the leader. People, he sets the tone. But Republicans so, have, have tried to enforce voter uh, identification laws across the country. That's we go to court in every saying, single yes. election That's over a this. Different this is, debate this is very different. Saying. But it's the He's larger terrible. debate about voter suppression. One is voter fraud, the other is voter suppression. It's two different things. Yeah. That is so just like a scare tactic. Right. This is, we're talking about voter intimidation. Right. Yeah. Right. That's vastly different than anything else that we're talking about because they made that mm -hmm. against the law. Mm -hmm. And my concern yeah. is that Folks who don't have a lot of money or folks who are poor people of color, all kinds of color, may feel, oh, you know, I'm, yes. I'm a little, I'm nervous about that. And that is not how we do stuff here. I know you're friends with Putin, but you can't use his tactics here, yeah. my friend. Yeah. Okay. And I, think, I think if you look at it, when you talk about the issue of voter ID laws and voter ID, yeah. Democratic turnout falls 8.8% in those neighborhoods when, well, when, when these things happen. That's but something that's you can something, have a legitimate yeah. debate about. This yeah. is this, not. This is something yeah, everybody that. should you be saying this is that. not okay. And I yeah. would True. say Republicans, step up. They step up to. and say yes. this is Ryan, not okay. Mitch All of you, McConnell. step up. They should. You know? being such chickens. <laughs> you know? They should. But will they? But will they? Well, you know, if, if they're representing the United States, yeah. Because the whole idea is everyone is supposed to be able to vote. The reason these laws came into place is because people watched it and said, you can't do this. And, you know, if you're going to play that game and you're going to put that out there, what do you think is going to happen if you put them in the wrong neighborhood? Do you think it's going to clash? Is that what you're looking for? This is not the Soviet Union, baby. This is America, and we're not rolling that way. We'll be right back with Mohan Khan. Coming up, robbed at gunpoint. The $10 million heist that left Kim Kardashian tied up and Kanye racing to her side. So with The View, we know funny. Do you both watch the debates? I skipped it. You skipped it? No, of course, of course, yes. So what'd you think? It looked like two old people fighting over custody. <laughs> Get a little funny in your view tomorrow on ABC. Okay, so, you know, we want to send our best to Kim Kardashian, who was robbed at gunpoint in a private mansion she was renting in Paris. Thieves posing as police got past her security, took off with $10 million in jewelry. Now, some people on social media say, uh, 
perhaps you shouldn't put so much information about your life online, but you had a, a great point. I did? Yes. They can find you any, I would make that point that they can find you anywhere now. Mm -hmm. Anybody can find where you live. They put your address on the internet. But why is she carrying $10 million worth of jewelry? Well, it's probably three things. A ring yeah. and a pair of earrings. Or just like that. But you know, really rich people, what they do is they get copies. Mm -hmm. yes. And they leave the real thing in the, in the, the, the box in the vault. There. Yeah, in the vault. What's the point but, of having it? if you don't wear the real one. Because the point is that you have the real one. That's the point. <laughs> <laughs> but, what I I guess. Guess. What I thought was terrible is, you know, she's a mom, she's a daughter, she's a wife, and people were like, ah, you know, if you didn't live your life so publicly, uh, this wouldn't have happened to you. It shouldn't have happened to her. This was a terrible thing. I heard that she was bound also. Yeah, I mean, she was up. tied up. That's why I mean, Kanye that's ran horrible. off stage last night. He was doing a concert in Brooklyn, I think. Oh. And literally in the middle of the, uh, I think the first half, because he was a little late, uh, he just said, I... There's a family emergency and literally yeah. ran. Wow. Did I say bro yeah, what did I said? Queens. He was in Queens. My bad. Yeah. How about this? Jessica uh, Beale, she's a mom, uh, just posted one of her mom multitasking shortcuts along with this photo. She wrote, yes, I eat in the shower. I admit it. Chicken, apple, sausage, and espresso. <laughs> I dare you to try it. <laughs> I, don't, I don't eat in the shower. I mean, I drink wine in the tub, but that's totally different. Um, but <laughs> thank you. I had a feeling I wasn't alone. But my mom taught me one. When I was changing Alec when he was little, he kept getting really fussy. And my mom said, he can tell you're not paying attention to him. Mm -hmm. And so I had earphones. And she goes, just change your intonation. Like, this is a right. game. So I started saying, you know, so is dad going golf? Thing today and like yeah. we're talking about it works. <laughs> Baby talk. So now yeah. when it, and it doesn't, I don't change my words. I just change my tone. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I've had like I try not to still be on the phone with him, but when I have to take my sister's call or my mom's, I just turn it into a game, and he actually feels really attended to. <laughs> oh, I have, I have extra tricks. I mean, I drink tea in the shower. I try, not in the shower, but in, in the bathroom. I try to do everything in the bathroom. I try to get up well, half an hour. Well, it's convenient. It's convenient, right? I try to do everything the half an hour before everyone else wakes up in the house. In before the, the yeah, before mom. Mama, 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 mama starts, right? Because that's that's what starts in my house at about 6.30, 6.15, because they're all eat, early. Do you eat in the shower? Sometimes, not in the shower, but sometimes in the bathroom. I know it sounds disgusting, but like I'll, do I'll go downstairs, do get my food, and bring it into the, the bathroom. Table? I mean, when you, I know, it sounds <laughs> crazy, but I try to get everything done, and so I'll run downstairs, get food, bring it all in the bathroom, close the bathroom door, and like do everything Clearly in the bathroom. Clearly you all are doing something wrong in the bathroom. Really? <laughs> because I can't bring any food in the bathroom. Oh. Because that's what, you know, that's what the bathroom is for, right? I know. You go and you release the food that you had I the know. night before. I know. Okay. We know. We we'll know. be right back. Hey, it's Mindy Kaling. I personally hate it when celebrities come on talk shows and just want to promote their own stuff. So I'm not even going to talk about the Mindy Project, which premieres tomorrow night. Devoted fans of comedian Mindy Kaling are very happy right now. Her sitcom, The Mindy Project, is about to kick off a new season, and her memoir, Why Not Me, just came out in paperback. Please welcome the fabulous and wonderful Mindy Kaling. <laughs> It. So popular. Feels good. <laughs> <laughs> what happened? Who's popular? What? I missed so it. Popular. She's I was like pop popular for 10 seconds. It was. <laughs> now you've been popular for a while now. You're Thank you. My goodness. So we were talking about what happened with Kim Kardashian. Yeah. Uh, and you have a huge social media following. Do you ever worry that you share too much? Um, do, I think. Uh, I'm not, I'm like one one hundredth as famous as Kim Kardashian and my gear, my gear isn't as nice as hers. Your so what? I don't think, my gear. Your gear? Yeah, is not your as, rear. Her my rear, both actually, no, sadly. No, 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 you've got a nice rear. It's, she's, thank you she's for saying that, that's why I came here, so you could compliment my ass. <laughs> but, um, well, you know, a good ass is hard to find. I agree. <laughs> Thanks, Whoopi. <laughs> anyway, we've made it about me and my body, which I like. Yes. Um, <laughs> uh, I just don't have as much um, 
nice stuff. It was her. Yeah, ten million dollars worth of jewelry. Yeah, that's her. wow. But I mean, that was so scary. Very Horrible. scary. Yeah. It's scary. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, speaking of social media, now you posted this picture on Instagram the other day. Let's see this picture. See this picture. What are you? What are you covering up? What happened to you? Um, <laughs> I had a scratched cornea. Yeah. Oh. From uh, <laughs> the wind blew some dust. It gets windy in Los Angeles and blew some dust in my eye, and I still rub my eye yeah. like a five year old, looking really hard. Yeah. I like to really get in there with my fist when I rub my eyes. Um, and I scratch my own cornea. So, so when you post it on Instagram, what happens after that? Um, People just write, oh, poor Mindy, or what? It was, <laughs> I think it was a little theatrical, and I kind of regretted it afterwards because everyone's like, are you okay? Yeah, Do yeah. you have an eye anymore? <laughs> um, and so then I had to be like, no, I was just in the ER for three hours, so I got bored. You got bored. <laughs> yeah. right. And it made me feel good. It was really brushed my ego because everyone was like, we'll help you tell yeah. us what we need to do. Yeah. Yeah. It was going to get you. <laughs> Mindy, yeah. we talk a lot um, here about the importance of female friendship. And uh, we understand that you had a bit of a difficult time finding female friends as an adult. Tell us about that. Is that true? Well, I think. I read about this in my book a little bit, but I think finding adult friends is just really hard mm -hmm. because you have so many other concerns. You have your love life, you have children and everything like that, and especially in L.A. It's <laughs> the loneliest. It's a whole other thing. It's right, yeah. especially if you are come into it and you're known or have any public persona, you always are questioning people's intentions. So I read in my book about the difficulty it is to be in L.A. and be alone and trying to find female friendships, and I read mm -hmm. about my getting my heart broken by, like, by a woman, by a friend, and how that actually hurts a lot more sometimes than a breakup with a guy. Because mm -hmm. the women's intimacy, the friendship we have, friend breakups, and yeah. what they know about you is just yeah. so intense. You yeah. got dumped by a friend? I got dumped by a friend. And why, yeah. do you know why? Do you have any idea? I, the friend uh, went kind of moved on to kind of more famous, <laughs> a more, more famous, famous person. Oh, so that, well, was, that was the most. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I should have learned that, that in my twenties, but I need to. <laughs> yeah. you don't need a friend like Thank that. Thank you. I have you guys. Yeah. Right. And you never dumped me. No, we, no. We, we know so many famous people anyway. Yeah. <laughs> you do. Yeah. And we don't judge them by their gear. So, <laughs> but in your book, uh, why not me? You give us a glimpse into your real life in a chapter. A day in the life of Mindy Kaling, which mm -hmm. I'm sure is like super glam. We have some pictures. <laughs> yeah, you can see that. So why don't you tell us about these? Sure. Okay. Let's say. So what's so, happening here? So I wanted people to see, because I think when you follow me on Instagram, I'm always putting on photos of myself looking gorgeous at an event because I'm very vain. But this is, I had my assistant take photos of me just during my day. So this is what I look like when I wake up. She literally came to my house and took a photo at 5.30 in the morning. Um, and you've got another one. Now that's a friend. That's a friend. This is me on my way to work. You look super cute there. Yeah. Thank you. Horrible. Yeah, you look good there. No makeup. Was that go. supposed to be the unglamorous one? Because that was cute. Thank you. That, okay. I, that felt unglamorous to you. Thank you for complimenting it. Thanks for applauding. <laughs> Uh, this is me in the hair and makeup chair. This is when, I don't know if I'm like you guys, but at 6 o'clock in the morning, you'd probably kill me. I'm like the most chatty. Like I'm oh, I love dead it. of the world and then I, I suddenly, I don't drink coffee. It's without coffee. Without coffee. Oh, wow. I just want to. I don't wanna, drink coffee either. I'm, you, you don't, no, yeah, I no. can't. And I just am ultra chatty. So that was a moment after two of my co-stars were like, don't talk to me, shut up. <laughs> and then. And then you fizzle out. And then I have to take little, um, little naps oh, during the day. According, naps. according to these photos, it's just like all I do is sleep all day. <laughs> I do go to work. Lindsay, I want to ask you about online dating because a lot of celebrities I'm noticing are doing online dating. You're not doing it. I haven't done it. Why not? What is it about it that makes you not want to do it? Uh, I think I have so many friends who do it. I have friends who've gotten married from doing online dating. I did. I think oh, you did yeah. really. I just feel really um, vulnerable. Yeah. Yeah. Already because going into online dating, they already know so much more about me right. than no, I do about them. Yeah. Don't do it. Don't do. Don't it. do it. No. Not for you. No, people know who you are. You so then you have it. to set me up with somebody. Yeah, better to be I'll, set I'm up. I'm gonna look around. Oh my gosh, okay. you're putting your I'm fate in Joy's hands. I'm pretty yeah. good at this. Really? Oh no. yeah. Yeah. I believe that. Yeah, I am. I think so too. Yeah. Yeah. I'm really good at this. Not know this. She met her husband. Where'd you meet your husband, Joy? At a semi-nudist camp. So good luck with that. Baby. <laughs> He was nude, I wasn't. That's the semi-nude. Oh. And that's when she knew, oh, you're the one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's amazing. Seriously. It yeah. was a very long time ago, but he, me, I was not anybody on TV at the time. Mm -hmm. Once you're on television, you have to watch who you go out with. Mm -hmm. But I'm very good at this. I fixed up my assistant. She's got a nice boyfriend right. now from back in the day. I have a and couple of others. You, she's never made this offer to me. <laughs> are you looking, are you also looking, Whoopi?
the market because no, I'll I'm go not, there. I'm not. Oh, I'll go there. Maybe I can help no. too. Oh, God. <laughs> Are you really looking for somebody? Or are you living your life? You're just having a good time I with think your I'm life. Doing both. I have like a great life. I have yeah. an awesome time, but I like I like a busy, fun, successful dude. That would be nice, well, right? Joyce yeah. like like yeah. Listen. Oh, this would be fun. So, really so we love we love that Mindy came. We want her to come <laughs> as often as she can. Season five of the Mindy her. Project <laughs> starts tomorrow on Hulu. Now her book, Why Not Me, is available in paperback and members of our audience are going home with a copy or Which rock legends are helping shape? So, it's crazy, but it's been 20 years since Sheryl Crow smash hit If It Makes You Happy, and three years since her last album, but she's making up for lost time because she's working on not one, but two new albums as we speak. Please welcome the very fabulous Sheryl Crow. <laughs> So, um, it's been 10 years since your breast cancer diagnosis. How you feeling, baby? This is a breast exam. Huh? I'm 10 years. I love it. Yeah. How yeah. you doing? I love it. You do it. Yeah. Because yeah. so many Let's women are... do it for each other. <laughs> so many women are very uncomfortable. They're uncomfortable right? Yeah. So many women are uncomfortable doing it. <laughs> Yes. Now, I am 10 years out, and um, I had no breast cancer in my family or anything, and I just went and had a mammogram, Yeah. and starting at 40, and they found it on a um, regular mammogram, and now we're 10 years out, and the technology is so different now that we have 3D. The sonograms mm -hmm. and everything. Yeah, yeah. so um, I'm actually working with um, Genius 3D, um, and their mammographies are 3D, and they can detect um, breast cancer 15 months earlier, so until we have a cure, yeah. early detection. Yeah. yeah. Ladies, early detection. And men. And men. Yes. Five percent of men. I know so. a man who got it. Yeah. 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 Very good wow. If you have yeah. breasts, yeah. you can get breast cancer. That's right. Cancer. Yeah. Wow. yeah. Mm -hmm. That's simple. That's right. And my, I have two little boys who are just obsessed with the word boob right now. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's like ten years, mom, boobs, butt, <laughs> boob, boob, <laughs> butt. Uh, and, and it is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, it and you're is. you're now a spokesperson. I am for this issue. Yeah, I'm working with Hologic. It's a great company, and um, the cool thing about breast cancer, I mean, there's not much cool about it, but um, except for surviving it, mm -hmm. is that if it's detected early enough, the the cure rate, the survival rate, is at five years is 100. Oh. Mm -hmm. And the great thing about 3D now is that they can they can look at your breast like slices like a like a like a book, and they can find everything. <coughs> which really cuts down on misdiagnosis and it also can find it 15 months earlier. When so. are you gonna do the test better without the smush? Sure. We'd like to call it the booby trap. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so, no, it's actually not that bad, you know. You know, I know that you're a political person, Cheryl. I am. And that you're a Hillary uh, Clinton supporter, yes? I am. And you're I out am. there with that. <laughs> so, uh, tell me how come you- on, Come on, come <laughs> on! Give us anything that you, you okay, think well, you here's know. Okay, well, here's my thing, okay? This two years has just been... Is it um, two years? It's been two years. Mm -hmm. Actually, I think uh, Cruz was the first one who came out yeah. over two years ago. Um, I am starting a petition shortly after the election for people to sign. I want everybody in this room to sign it and send it, send it on. We're one of the only countries who doesn't limit the campaign season, and it's ridiculous. It's too long. Oh, so, yeah. um, like England has like three months, Canada has like six weeks. I'm just saying six months, that's it. Mm -hmm. And Congress isn't gonna change it because they won't do anything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They just don't. Yeah. So I want everybody to go on and sign it. And it's gonna be on change.org, it'll be on my website. I'm gonna get it to Katy Perry. I'm gonna get it to everybody who has big outreach. Yeah. And we have to change it. We cannot be dragged through Another well, nasty please, political please. season. Well, you know, the, we, we, go ahead, Jen. Yeah, no, I wanted to add, because you spent some time with both of these candidates, which is I so know. interesting. Yes. How did that come about, and what was your perception of each of them, having met them in person? Um, <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> Let's talk about a commercial. Truth. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> um, I did travel with Mrs. Clinton. I went to Bosnia. Um, she has done a lot of work for 
like 30 years for women and children. Yeah. And I don't care. You know, I, I saw what happened with President Obama. It made me sick. I think he brought out some real bigotry in the, com in the country by virtue of the fact that he was the first black president. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm just speaking my mind here. I'm seeing it with the first female who's Absolutely. running for president. Mm -hmm. And it sickens me. And um, as far as Trump is concerned, I met him on the set of Studio 54. Uh, it was a movie. <laughs> it was a movie. And he was being who he is, which is Donald Trump. You yeah. know, he was yeah. making his appearance. That's me and Cindy Crawford. I'm oh. trying to look as tall as she is. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but that's the only time I've ever met him. But, um, you know, I'm embarrassed. I can't, my kids, I, I, I mean, I don't want to go too far into it, but I don't let my kids watch TV when he's on. It's just, I want to be able to say to my kids, being the president of the United States is the most honorable position, and it needs to go back to that. And we need to change the dialogue. Yeah. Well, I'll change it to a shiny, happy place. Okay. You're going to talk about another anniversary of yours. It's been 20 years since your hit song, If It Makes You Happy. <laughs> you can charge us for that. I can't um, believe it. I know. I just made 23 cents. <laughs> um, yeah. You had made some revealing, you had some revealing moments when making that video. Well, revealing in that I was wearing a miniskirt and there were several shots of my <laughs> um, underwear. See? Right there? Oh. Okay. I well, you, let that. me tell you, they, if you don't see my underwear there because we went through every frame. Now, this was 20 years ago. Oh. Nowadays, if we were making the video, I probably wouldn't have been wearing any clothes. I would have just had underwear on. <laughs> That's the difference in 20 years and, you know, yeah. back but, then. But, but you yeah. were working on two new albums. Tell us yes. quickly about them. Oh, my gosh. I'm so excited. I've just completed a record with people that I love who I've known for a long time who are inspirations like Keith Richards, oh, yes. Neil Young, Stevie Nicks, the incredible Stevie oh, Nicks. Yes. Oh, my God. Willie Nelson. They're all the best. All the best. The I even have people. a cut with Johnny, um, Johnny Cash, who I worked oh. with before he passed. Oh, really? So it's a really collaborative record with people that I have loved and admired who've been inspiring to me. And, new songs. Um, new songs. I can't wait to hear yeah, that. Yeah, actually, I recorded a song by Keith that I just love that he had written. I said, I want to record this song, and would you do it? And for two days, we had in the studio. It was a blast. Oh, so, and then the other really? record is just a good old-fashioned Cheryl Crow Jeff Trot record. So. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Yay. I know. I've been busy. Right. You're very <laughs> and, You're a and, and I'm going on a Boy Scout camping trip in two weeks. Oh. Oh. Boy Scout trip? <laughs> Keeping it real. You know. <laughs> oh. Well, you know what? That's why you lived, babe. That's right. To keep it real. That's yeah. Right. We, we're right. glad you made it. That's Thank right. you. Yeah. Thank, Thank you for coming, Cheryl Crow. Thank you, man. For more information on her work with 3D mammography and early detection for breast cancer, you can head to our website or go to Cheryl's website. But go somewhere and find out what you can do to help yourself. We'll be right back. Hey everybody, Greta here. There's never been a better reason to view your deal. Everything you buy will help the fight against breast cancer. So get a deal and make a difference. Up next. It's Breast Cancer Awareness Month and on today's View Your Deal, you can join the fight just by shopping. We partnered with vendors for up to 79% off items that benefit breast cancer research and treatment, but it's only while supplies last, so let's get shopping for the cause with style expert Greta Monahan. Thank you. I love having That's you. amazing. This oh, is so great. You're going to love these deals. So first up, Aura Delphine. Check this out. Feel this genuine, I love this. super soft leather bags. This shape satchel, you get all of these different varieties. You get the wristlet or your choice or the zip around little wallet, which I love and is amazing. These are so high quality. They're beautiful. The original price on these okay. is $55 to $425. and do good, why not? Okay, I have one on because I love it. You look so cute in this. Kevia wraps and shawls. So the statement shawl was the number one hit on runway season. So oh, wow. it is a big fashion item, but people think that you can't wear these. You can wear these as everything. So this is the ombre classic, which you have yeah. there. And I have the cable knit with the fringe. Why do I always look like I'm in a blanket? Original, okay. doesn't that feel so soft? No itch. Okay. Original $98, get this. Deal $29 with free shipping. Free shipping! You, our kids I can love use these as blankets. This All is right. so 
cute. Now, Julep, I okay. did my whole beauty look. I love this. I tried the mask last night. I, I love like this line. Those this is a cult following because of all of the beautiful shades. Yeah. So you get a choice of all the pinks and neutrals because they're foolproof. Okay. So you can go on and pick what you want. And it's all sets, nail polish, lip color, everything that you love. And also the skincare to go with it, which is really incredible. Original price on these, $40 to $70 per set. Tell us Hang right off your seat. $20 to $35 per set. <laughs> Okay. And where do you get all these deals? Okay, viewyourdeal.com. Viewyourdeal.com, You have guys. to go there. They're going to sell out. They're amazing. Okay. Lulu Dharma, I know you know this bag. I love this bag. Because you carry it every day. Basically, <laughs> that's the other version. Well, this is your new version. Okay. All the prints are new, but this is the silhouette that is best selling. Okay. Because it's huge. See the zip up top? Opens up. You can wash the interior. All of these prints are super cool. They go with everything. Original price. And this canvas, you cannot kill it. It can carry anything. $125. But today? Price, $35. <laughs> rustic cut. I love rustic, rustic cut. cut. Right. But these are these are incredible. We know that we love positivity, but you can wear it, give it as a gift. These, oh, these are, are carry for a cause bracelets, all beaded with whatever your choice of metal, metal, gold and silver. All of the different single word statements. Believe, love, hope, hope love. Amazing. Okay. Original price on these, and they feel really good. $65. Today's price, $26. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now these, these are so cute. Okay, so this is a scarf that you can stash your stuff in. Take a look. It's got a secret How pocket. How cool is that? Shoulder it. Right, everyone's like, whoa. Because you want to give hands-free hugs. Hands-free hugs, but they're awesome for like walking my son to school. Amazing. That's cute. I'm going to put some I'm things just like, being creative. Why does she look so good in that? I love it. All right, original price, $30 to but today, $70. Today, $15 to $35 for percent off. Greta, thank you as always. Just kidding. <laughs> Thanks to Greta Monaghan. The clock is ticking, people. You have 24 hours to grab any of these exclusive deals, plus one more online deal at viewyourdeal.com. And members of the audience are going home with the Julep Lip Gloss Duo. Woo! We'll be right back. Turn around. Hey, Greta, you look great. Thank you. of our 20-day vacay giveaway thanks to our sponsor, Wyndham Rewards. Whoopi is getting in our wind booth for the last time, which is full of numbers that represent today's studio audience, and she's about to pick a winner. Whoopi, are you ready? Yeah. She doesn't have to wear them. She's Whoopi. <laughs> You got the last number floating on the door. I know. It was very weird. That was weird. impressive. <laughs> very weird. And the winner is? 152. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what is your name? What's your name and where are you from? Kelsey. Kelsey, where yeah. are you from? Illinois. I heard her exclaim, oh my. Before the crowd went. Well, you, you, your, your number was just like, hey. I know. Was the last one. Was the last one. Where's she going? Congratulations. You're getting a trip to stay at the Viva Wyndham V Heavens in the Dominican Republic. Thank you so much. <laughs> That's awesome. You have, a, you have a passport? Yeah, I Okay, do. good. You need a passport? <laughs> well, you probably do. Yeah, so look, thanks yes. for coming, you guys. We really appreciate having everybody here. We want you to just have a great day. And, of course, take a little time to enjoy whatever view you happen upon.